Well, this real nice Kenwood TS590 HF transceiver belongs to my friend Jeff, and he asked me to do a little work on it for him. Uh, his main complaint is that it's slightly off frequency, and that's uh, a relatively simple adjustment, but uh, he thought that as long as we were doing that, we'd uh, go ahead and install the uh, SO3 TCXO, which is a temperature compensated uh, crystal oscillator, uh, reference oscillator, and that will improve the overall stability of the radio to uh, let's see, the spec says plus or minus a half a ppm. So in this video, we'll take a look at how to do that. And the process for installing the SO3 TCXO is spelled out pretty clearly in the owner's manual. Uh, it's a simple matter of uh, installing the module, uh, moving a jumper, and then uh, going off and uh, readjusting the frequency calibration. And there's a, a simple process in here for that. So uh, let's get started by removing the rear cover. Now with all 10 screws removed, we can pull the cover off. There's no need to remove uh, the screws that are holding the feet on, because they're, not, they're just screwed into the back cover itself. The rear cover is off. This is the, uh, the front of the rig up here. So right uh, towards the front corner, this is the board that the temperature compensated crystal oscillator gets mounted to. So we remove one screw that's right back here, pull this plug, solder that uh, crystal oscillator here, put the board back in place, and there's a reconfiguration of these jumpers. Okay, the TCXO option that uh, my friend Jeff bought for his radio wasn't just the uh, crystal oscillator that you solder on this board, but uh, was installed already on a board. So it uh, probably is not the one from Kenwood, but it should work uh, just as well. So I've already installed the board, I'll just have to uh, install the plug here, and then we'll reconfigure the jumpers. And of course the instructions say to completely remove these two jumpers, but to avoid misplacing them in the future, I simply uh, move them over on the pair of pins so they're no longer connecting and shorting the two pins out. The next step is to fine tune the frequency of that reference oscillator. And we're going to do so by using a standard reference frequency like WWV or WWVH at 10 megahertz or 15 megahertz and beat the transceiver's CW side tone against the carrier heterodyne when listening to that station in CW mode. So the process is all written out here in the manual, but let's just go ahead and do it. So I've got the rig set up in CW mode, tuned to WWV at 10 MHz, because that's what I can hear with a pretty good signal strength here. Make sure that the CW side tone is at 800 Hz, as specified in the uh, manual. So now if we turn the volume up, we should hear the heterodyne of the carrier at 800 Hz. So we can hear that pretty clearly. All right, with the Vox turned off, we can key the radio, and it won't transmit an RF signal, but, but it will generate an 800 hertz side tone out of this audio circuit. So that will mix with, or be combined with, the 800 hertz heterodyne tone that we're listening to. And if I key that, you can hear a slight wavering in that signal, because those two 800 hertz signals are not exactly the same. In fact, we can hear that uh, more clearly if I adjust the uh, frequency on the radio. You hear that beat is going really fast now, and then slows down. Now, ideally we want that beat to slow down to the point where it's not even moving at all. And that's when we'll have those two 800 hertz tones matching each other, and that's when the reference oscillator will be exactly tuned properly. So let's go ahead and do that. There's a little access hole in the top of the can of the TCXO that came shipped with a little foil label on top of it. I've removed that in order to make the adjustment. The adjustment needs to be made with an appropriate non-metallic adjustment, adjustment tool. I know Kenwood supplies that with uh, the TCXO that you can get from them, but I'm just using one from my, uh, my trimmer box. All right, uh, I've got the trimmer engaged inside of the TCXO. Unfortunately, I'm gonna have to turn the volume up uh, high enough to hear the beat clearly so I just have to bear with that. So now we'll key the radio up. I can hear that wavering. We're just going to make an adjustment to make that wavering go away. You can see we're going the wrong way that way. Now we're really close. It's just barely moving now, so that's a dead on. Alright, so before we button it up, I want to be sure to uh, replace the uh, little, little copper foil tape 
that we had covering the tremor hole. Now the other thing I don't really like about the Kenwood method that's in the manual is that it's relying on the fact that the side tone produced by the radio is exactly 800 Hz. So I'm going to do a quick double check here that doesn't rely on that side tone. And it's a quick little trick that uh, makes it very easy to check the frequency accuracy of the rig. So I've got the, uh, there's two VFOs in this rig. One um, I've got dialed in at an upper sideband 500 hertz below WWV, which means that the carrier is going to be produce a 500 hertz tone in the audio. And then if we switch to VFOB, that's tuned 500 hertz above. Well, it was. Let's make it back here. 500 hertz above the carrier, but in lower sideband. So it is also going to produce a 500 hertz audio tone. So with the volume turned up, we can switch back and forth between the A and B VFO, and that heterodyne that we hear in both VFOs should be exactly the same. So there's our 500 hertz heterodyne. It sounds exactly the same on the other VFO. So I'm convinced that now we've got that reference oscillator dialed in perfectly. That's really all there is to installing the temperature compensated crystal oscillator into this Kenwood TS590. Now keep in mind that uh, we adjusted for that beat to occur very, very slowly or, or not at all uh, when listening to that carrier heterodyne. And if we had that beat running at 1 hertz, since we did the adjustment at 10 megahertz, that means that we would be essentially at 0.1 ppm, right? 1 hertz out of 10 megahertz. Uh, the fact that we got it uh, much less than 1 hertz in terms of that B frequency says that we're well under 0.1 ppm uh, frequency accuracy with our initial setting. And with the TCXO, we should be able to maintain pretty close to that under normal operating conditions. Well, I hope you enjoyed this look at how to install the temperature compensated crystal oscillator into this Kenwood TS590. If you liked the video, uh, give me a thumbs up. Hopefully you uh, take some of the fewer way of tackling this job yourself. If you're not a subscriber already, please do so. And if you want to be notified when I post new videos, just uh, ring the bell that's right down there below the video. And thanks again as always for watching.